Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is a walk around tour of my latest e-bike build. This is the Cottonmouth and it's a light electric vehicle with a peak power of six kilowatts. That's also able to be ridden as a regular street legal bicycle. It utilizes a dual drive train to get the best of both worlds. High power and speed, as well as a full range of bicycle gears. In terms of power and performance, the fastest I've gone with this bike so far is 92 kilometers an hour, which is 57 miles an hour for the USA and the UK. It hits this on the flat, and I think that's about the maximum you can have for the gearing. This is with 25% field weakening, so I could bump it up a bit and find a nice safe place and see if I can get that 100 kilometers an hour. It's more than fast enough for anything that I wanna do though, really. The more important part is that it has excellent acceleration, even up the nine to 10% grades that are pretty common here. What I like is that you can have a really fun ride without having to thrash the motor right at its very limits. It will sit and cruise along at 50, 60, pretty efficiently. In terms of noise, now that the chain tensioner at the rear is gone from the early prototype, it's almost silent at lower power. It's much quieter than CYC or Bafang, and it's definitely much quieter than something of the equivalent level of power, such as a Sir Ron. The combination of a belt primary and the lack of reduction gears and tensioners means there's not that much there to generate noise in the first place. And at high power, you can hear the motor, but it's not something that's remotely intrusive. I'm gonna split this review or walk around into different sections, chapters, so feel free to jump around. If there's something I've missed, let me know in the comments. And if there are enough questions, I'll do a follow-up and answer all of those for you. So the wheels here are 27.5 inch and I built them using Halo SAS rims and 13 gauge spokes. The front hub also has the option for a dual disc down the road if I want to um, have a bit more like, extra stopping power or something. But right now with these Fox 40s, it's just a single front brake. And the rear hub back here, it's uh, a DT Swiss 350, which is a strong hub and it works well with, with e-bikes. The idea with these wheels was to build uh, something that was really quite strong and can handle lots of punishment. If you wanna see how good these halo rims are, you can check out Sam Pilgrim's spoke cutting challenge where he was able to still ride his bike with only about seven or eight spokes left on each wheel. Building the wheels is actually one of the most fun parts of this build for me. It's one of those tasks that you can just sort of focus on. It's almost, almost meditative, especially the truing and tensioning. And like, I, I really wish that I got to build more bicycle wheels. The tires uh, I'm using are Schwalbe. I went with these because they're a, a good fit for the kind of riding that I'll be doing, mostly urban, dirt roads, light trails. It's not really set up this bike for heavy off-roading. I think we'll leave that for the, uh, the full suspension version of this bike coming later this year. They're 2.4 inches wide. They have a decent amount of puncture protection, low rolling resistance, and they're, they're a good fit for this build. So the brakes down here at the front are Magura MT5 quad piston, and there is a 220 millimeter rotor up front. There is also a 220 millimeter rotor at the back as well. As far as I'm concerned, if you wanna go really quickly on an e-bike, you also need to be able to stop as quickly as well. The rear disc actually is pretty unique for this one. It combines the rear sprocket for the 219 left-hand drive reduction. And in order to pack everything in, the caliper has been moved up to the top. This also allows an extra brake in the form of regen braking. And the way this works is up on the left-hand side here, I have a reverse throttle. And by rolling this throttle forwards, I can vary the strength of braking. This currently sends a maximum of just over 600 watts back to the battery. Once you get to using it though, it, it's pretty intuitive. And most of the time I just brake using the regen and using the, the front brake there on the right. Um, sometimes just entirely on using the throttles, just brake with the regen and then back on the throttle there as well. And the rear brake down here, it's not really seen. 
it's not really seen very much use at all, but it's nice to have it. Uh, you can actually use uh, any style of throttle you want up here if you wanted to. Um, I could also go with a thumb style throttle or even a full twist. And where I live, there are hills in every direction. So I found that the, the gain in terms of battery has not actually been insignificant. It's even to the point where if I was to ride the bike as a regular 750 watt pedal assist on a route with a mix of climb and ascents, the range of the bike would actually be quite considerable. As it stands, going at it with the throttle full power, I can get about 40 to 50 kilometers. So I think honestly, several hundred kilometers would be possible by utilizing regen, albeit at regular bike speeds of 30 to 35 kph. As long as you live in areas with plenty of variation in terms of elevation and, and ride at those non-powered bicycle kind of speeds. I should spend uh, a bit of time on the frame because there has been considerable effort gone into this design to make it work with, with this bike overall. The biggest thing is probably the, the horizontal tensioners for the dropouts at the back. This allows for the 219 chain to be tensioned with the rear axle rather than using a separate chain tensioner. And this reduces the complexity of the mechanism with less parts to wear out. And it also greatly reduces the noise. Most of the sound with the early prototype of this bike came from the sprung chain tensioner. And I think it's a much cleaner look just to have a straight runner chain to the back wheel. Other parts of this frame that are less obvious are a wide platform for mounting a battery and also various cutouts on the bike for neat and tidy wiring. If I come round to this side, you can also see there is a frame brake incorporated into this, which will allow people to run things like a, a gates, belt drive, and probably an IGH down the road. The motor with this bike is the smallest of the lightning rods motors, and it allows it to fit inside the same footprint here as a Bafang Ultra motor. It just delivers four times the power. It runs up to six kilowatts peak and has a really chunky IPM rotor that really delivers the power and torque. The overall reduction going to the rear is 9.33 to one. The first stage is via a belt drive here and then it's a 219 chain to the rear. The electronics are powered by a ASI back 2000 controller, which is in the box here. And it's pretty nicely matched the power requirement of this motor. It's pushing up to 180 amps peak from the 72 volt battery here, which is using Sony VT6 cells. So there's seven parallel groups of that. So it has pretty decent battery sag, um, or it's pretty decent in terms of battery sag, I should say. As well as the throttle, there is also pedal assist. Uh, right now, this is cadence based. There may well be a torque sensor down the road, but this is a pretty small team developing this bike, so things have to be done in stages. So much like the full suspension version, it, it's one step at a time. Because it's using the, the ASI controller though, it's about the best you can get for a cadence-based system with a very rapid response to starting and stopping pedaling. At the moment, I have it set to 750 watts of pedal assist with nine levels of power, and it's pretty easy to modulate things to get a comfortable cadence at standard bicycle speeds. The bicycle gears we have on the right here, and it's a pretty standard set of bike sprockets. There's the 36T up at the front, and there's an 11 to 48T rear cassette. And you shift and change the bike gears just like a regular mountain bike. And there are some pretty big benefits to doing things this way. So a large benefit of using the drive on the left-hand side is that you avoid the kind of hub damage that you can get by running everything through on the right-hand side. Inside the rear hub, you have a set of poles that engage to move the wheel forwards, but allow it to slip past when you're not pedaling. It's essentially the reason why you don't have to continuously pedal a bike like you would have to do with a fixed wheel bike. What can happen if you start to push high power, like three, four, five kilowatts through a hub, is that it can strip out the poles. And once that happens, there's nothing left to drive the bike forwards and the motor will just spin the chain around with zero effect. And there are not many hubs out there that can hold up to high power. And you generally have to either spend a lot of money on something like an Onyx hub, or you have to build something very custom. And with this, you can use DT Swiss components, which are much more affordable and plenty strong enough. Another benefit of having the motor powered on the left 
is you can get an arrow straight chain line. This greatly reduces the amount of wear and tear you get on sprockets. You can use a thicker sprocket and a beefier chain. So this here is using 219 chain or go-kart chain. If you're using the power on the right, unless you're in the center gear, you'll be running the chain off to one side, which puts additional stress and wear on a bicycle chain, which is not really designed to withstand three, four or five kilowatts power in the first place. High power e-bikes tend to consume bicycle chains much faster. This uses the correct chain for the correct purpose. And as a result, components will last much longer. So you might be saying there are two chains to take care of, which is true, but there's no reduction gearbox at the front here to take care of either. And there's no internal reduction gears in the motor unit up front. So in total, you have a belt, a chain and a chain which overall is actually a simpler system than the mid drives you see running everything through the right side. You also don't need to take the motor apart to regrease those gears. With this system, you can push six kilowatts through it and still have a full range of usable bicycle sprockets. I'm using a very wide range, 11 to 48 T cassette. Once you start trying to run over three and four kilowatts through regular bicycle gears on the right hand side, it tends to want to pull the chain to a straight line and that in itself tends to limit the range of gears that you can use and usually you have to cut down on the number of gears to maybe two or three. With this system you can put on as much power as you want whenever you want and not have to ever worry about the chain line or being in the right gear for the motor. The motor will always run that 9.33 to 1 ratio. You can go riding on steep slopes with the 48T sprocket, 500 watts of pedal assist and it will ride pretty much like a regular e-bike obviously heavier than something like a specialized bike, but lighter than something like a Bike Tricks Juggernaut. Then with the same bike, you can also ride with traffic on the road. And honestly, it's easily the most versatile bike that I've ever ridden. In terms of riding on the road, I'll do another video to go over that. You've probably noticed the, the light and the front molding up front. And there's also a frame number to go with this bike, as well as a motor or engine number. So along with the light here, I'll be adding turn signals, brake lights, and a horn. And I'm gonna see if I can get this road legal and registered. I'm not sure if it's actually gonna be possible to do that here in Canada, but I'm gonna give it a good crap because you can build your own gas powered motorcycle or car here. So I don't really see what the difference is with what I'm doing here. I also have a prototype for a rear unit, but I need to do a bit of work on that. And that combines a rear mud guard along with the required lights. The, uh, the light unit here at the front actually pivots forward and there'll be room in the back here or tucked inside here for a 12 volt battery along with all the wiring required to make everything work. But that's for, that's for another video. If you're interested in this bike, you can get in touch with North Bay Bikes who are heading up this project and there are details for that in the description. In terms of the price, uh, you can order the frames for 500 to 550 and build your own bike with one. You can also buy a DIY kit for $3,000 and you can buy a fully pre-built bike with everything bar the battery for 6,000, which for the performance that you get in here, I think that's a pretty good deal. If you have any questions, uh, please post them in the comments or on Discord where there is a dedicated chat room for the cotton mouth bikes. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.